Hey everybody, welcome to another video and today I've got a tongue twister for you. Can you say cured Katornix quail egg yolks? Well that's what we're going to be making and I'm starting with kosher salt. And you know you can search the internet for different recipes but truth is they vary by the author. What I found that worked personally for me was equal weight. So I used a pound of salt and a pound of uh, turbinado sugar and I'm just mixing it up real good. The other ingredients are very simple. I'm using dried onion flakes, a little bit of thyme, and some bay leaf. And then right there in the back, I've got some smoked applewood sea salt. I'm going to put the smoked applewood sea salt in last, and you're going to see why. So as we mix up all of our ingredients together, let me tell you why I even wanted to make Katornix quail egg yolks that are cured. And it's because, and you'll see in a future video, I'm into salami making. I love it. Making all kinds of different varieties that just stretch the imagination. And I want to make a salami that borders on the elements of breakfast. So I had this idea in my mind to put an egg inside of a salami. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's usually where most of my ideas start. Now, you can't put a regular egg inside of a salami. It's too big. You got to go with something small. And you can't put a fresh or boiled egg inside of a salami because it's going to uh, go bad during the process of fermentation. So what do you do? I think this is the answer. Now I haven't done it yet and hopefully in the next couple weeks I'll get one going and I can't wait to share that video with you. But that's the reason why this particular idea was spawned. And As you can see here, I'm preparing the surface. Out of my entire mix, I scooped out about two cups. I left whatever was uh, remaining in the, in the bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and make my little holes to put the quail eggs. The reason I scoop some out is because when I've got all my quail eggs inside the salt sugar herb mixture, I'm going to come back and curve them. And you can literally do whatever you want. That's, you can only use salt. You know, if you're trying to cut sugar out, you can add whatever spices you want to mix. If you want to make it spicy, put some cayenne pepper. If you want to, you know, put some garlic in there or garlic powder. And you're going to impart all kinds of really neat, subtle flavors to this kind of cool new trend that's taking over professional kitchens all over the world. You want to be careful when you cut the egg. And, you, and with a sharp knife, unless you have an, a, a quail egg scissors, uh, I didn't happen to have any. So you just want to cut the top off and uh, be sure not to bust the yolk. And all you're going to try to do here is separate the white from the yolk. Now, quail eggs are slightly different than, than chicken eggs and their yolk is a little bit denser and it's a little bit more sticky and so they're a little more challenging to and they're smaller so they're a little more challenging to work with but once you get the hang of it you'll be able to work quite quickly uh, in order to do it I think I have wow it seems like a ton of them there but I, you know maybe 36 eggs to work with And if you don't get all the yolks, you know, and the whites separated, it's not that big of a deal because after it cures, the whites come off fairly easy. But you just don't want to, you know, overload your little pan with a bunch of whites. Notice how I'm holding the knife, and just right with the tip, I'm poking a hole, just as if a little chick is hatching. That's how they do it, and you can just cut it right in half. Cuts very easy. If you ever get a chance to make po poached quail eggs you ought to do it they're the neatest little things they take like 45 seconds to cook and I am just placing the yolks in the little depressions that I've made earlier and I realized after I made the depressions that I had a whole lot of extra room so as you'll see here I made more depressions when you're finished it's gonna show signs of the water being absorbed from the yolk and that's going to give you like a wet sand look. And here you're going to see it in a minute. I'm going to try to do an up close for you. Notice the edges. See how they're starting to change color? This is within 20, 30 minutes. They look a little more pale. This salt sugar solution is going to cure your egg and it's going to draw the moisture out. And what that's going to do when it, re when it reduces the water activity, it's going to inhibit 
the growth of bacteria. So by the very process of curing this egg yolk, you're going to make it shelf stable. As you see right now, I'm going ahead and adding the, the, the smoked sea salt, but you don't have to do this. Like I said, completely optional. I'm just imparting some really different flavors to this end product so that when I make the, the salami that I plan on making, I have a lot of really subtle, complex notes that bring a umami power punch to, uh, to every bite. And I know some of you who are into homesteading who deal with like fermentation and uh, you know kombucha and kvass and sauerkraut and things like that, this is right up your alley, especially if you have quails or chickens uh, on, your, on your place, on your farm. Once you're done, you're going to sprinkle all the rest of that salt and sugar solution on it till it's completely covered and you want at least three quarters to an inch on top and you're going to loosely cover with cling film. Seven days later, that's been in the refrigerator for a week and now you can see it's got a wet, kind of a wet sand look to it. As we start to remove them, you're going to kind of get a better, a better idea but what's happened is that salt has just drawn that water out. The sugar has helped to balance it up a bit, otherwise they're going to be a little more salty. And um, what typically people do with this product is after it's, you know, after it's cured, which is what we're doing now, and then after it's dried, which is what we'll do in a minute, uh, they, they grate it or they use it in recipes so that it adds just a different level of flavor to, uh, to the recipes. Most people will add it to the top of pasta eggs benedict you can mix it in your dressings really you've got so many different options to use cured quail egg yolks right now it's a treasure hunt I'm looking for I'm looking for the little pearls and they're quite firm actually you know they're a lot more firm than I thought they would have been upon first making it but uh, so you don't have to be you don't have to be too gentle with it now that now that they're all taken out of the salt and the sugar. I'm just rinsing them in water. I'm cleaning off any extra herbs. Although I want to leave some herbs, but you don't have to. You can clean them off completely. And we're going to set them aside. And as you can see, they look like little tiny Werther's Originals or, or apricots or something like that. Dried apricots. Once you get them rinsed, you're going to put them on a dehydrator tray. If you don't have a dehydrator, you could put them in the oven. Um, and if you don't have an oven, you can you can put them in front of a fan, actually. So it really doesn't matter. This is what they're going to look like. Notice the different shapes, the different colors. Okay, here's what we're going to dry it. 140 degrees for two to three hours. Or if you're going to put it in an oven, 90 minutes at 150 degrees and it'll be good to go and all we're doing is we're just drying out the last little bit of moisture that's on the surface that's on the inside and this is going to take care of it you don't want to go too hot you're not cooking it you're just drying it okay three hours later and they are done it looks immediately like the color is sort of softened up a little bit they smell great you get this real nice thyme and herby smell that's coming from them they're a lot more firm than they were when I put them in and so they have this sort of a, a, a medium firm style cheese is how kind of they feel. And now we are ready to either use them or put them up and so if you're gonna put them up put them in a vacuum seal bag pop it in the fridge and you pretty much have these things indefinitely so I grated some up so that you could see and it actually looks a little like cheddar cheese which is interesting because this actually has a very cheesy quality to it, you know, like the aspect of an aged cheese does. But it also is just so complex with the other flavors. You know, you have a very salty, sweet, herby thing going on with it. It is rocking the powerhouse umami. It is, there's no doubt about it. And so add this to whatever dish you want to elevate. I'm looking to elevate some salami, and uh, I think that it's going to possibly be the weirdest salami on the planet. But get creative and wild. I'd love to hear your ideas. Click that logo to subscribe, and stay tuned for some really cool videos. I hope you liked the video, and thanks a lot for watching.